if you want to see more of the gauntlet reviews, if you like this, please let me know in the comments. If you hated it, I guess you can still let me know in the comments, but uh, anyway, I, I want to do knife reviews for guys who use knives. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, welcome to a very special episode of Knife Thursday. Now, if you're paying attention, you might have seen that screen right after the intro uh, that talked about St. Nick's knives. Uh, so before I get into this review of the excellent Benchmade uh, Griptilian, the 550-1 in 20CV, uh, I just want to explain and give you full disclosure about everything that's going on here. Um, so I have partnered with St. Nick's Knives and what they do, the deal that we have worked out is they send me knives. Uh, I test them for however long I need to test them, up to about a month. Um, I make videos on them and then I send them back to them. So I do not keep these knives unless I choose to purchase them. Uh, and when I do purchase them, I do get a discount. Um, I am not paid. There is no money changing hands. I get a discount on knives. Uh, and, you know, so I just, I want you guys to, I don't want you to think that they just send me stuff, you know, to keep expensive knives and stuff like that. Whatever I'm going to be getting from St. Nick's, I'm going to be sending back unless I choose to purchase it. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of the, that's the deal. I just wanted to be very upfront about that stuff. So I did not purchase this. Uh, from St. Nick's, they sent it to me for free. However, I am purchasing this. Uh, I will be buying it from them because this knife is so stinking good. So uh, I'm doing something very different for my reviews from now on. Uh, I know I've done some tabletop, I've, I've always done some demonstrations, but I decided um, that I wanna do something quite a bit different with my reviews. These are EDC knives mostly that I'm reviewing and so I want to put these things through the EDC paces that a lot of people might use them for so I'm going to be cutting paracord and some thicker like half inch uh, sisal rope and we're going to be doing cardboard and we're going to be doing zip ties and we're going to be doing duct tape and we're just we're going to be doing all that and through each test I'm going to uh, see if it passes the paper cut test now on this I'm going to be doing the factory edges so every knife that I get from now on I'm going to do these same tests uh, on the factory edge when I first get it. I've carried this about a week, actually, yeah, a week yesterday or a week today, uh, and I've been using a snot out of it. So this still has the factory edge, but it's got quite a bit of use on it, and I have not been like real easy on it. I haven't been ginger. I've, I've just been cutting anything and everything that I come in contact with. So this definitely has some use on it. However, this 20CV, which is essentially uh, Bowler M390, it's just the Latrobe version of it, um, it's very, very, very good steel. So I'm going to do the cut test first, and after you guys see how this thing performs, I'm going to give you an overview and some specs, or maybe I'll just talk about it while I'm doing the cut test so you guys have something to listen to instead of just me cutting stuff. So anyway, stick around. We're going to jump right in and see what this Griptilian 550 can do. All right, guys, so I'm here with the Griptilian, and like I said, we've got about a week's worth of use on it, and uh, I'm going to try to talk about this thing a little bit as I review it, but we'll just get a baseline and see if this thing cuts paper. This is just regular printer paper, if I can get a good grip on there. So, yeah, we see that it easily cuts paper. Now, what I'm going to do is come back to this paper after each test and see if it still cuts it. Uh, so, first thing up is let's just do some paracord. Uh, obviously, every knife in the world should be able to cut, you know, some paracord without really any trouble. Uh, so we'll do a couple of those cuts, and then I will try to uh, we'll loop this up a little bit and see what it does with a few loops of paracord. There's uh, four layers. Let's see how this slices through. And again, guys. You know, obviously, this is paracord. This is this is really nothing that's gonna uh, challenge just about any blade. Um, but we'll cut some here. Sorry if my hand's in the way. I'm a lefty, I know. Uh, but this is just cutting through it like nothing. So all that is easy. Obviously, I'm I'm really not worried about about this thing cutting the paper afterwards. Oh, maybe I am. No, I just. Don't know how to grab paper apparently. So yeah, goes through. Uh, it'll still slice it uh, when I don't. See, trying to do things on camera and trying to do things in real life, 
are uh, different things. So anyway, uh, now from there, let's move on to the sisal rope. Um, now one thing that I just wanted to say about the, um, the Scriptilian is when I started with it, you know, they sent this, this sheep's foot blade with kind of like this, this spidey hole here. And um, I, was not, I was not in love with it. Man, this is some hard stuff. Um, I really was not in love with this thing as far as looks go, really at all. Um, just because I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the, the Spyderco whole style knives. Uh, so when I see this, I'm, it was just kind of, I don't know if it was a turn off, but like it wouldn't be my first choice. Um, when, when St. Nick's told me that they were going to send me the, the Griptilian and the G10, I was really excited. Um, but then I saw this, I was like, well, I'm a little less excited. Um, but really it's, it's grown on me quite a bit. And this jimping on the thumb ramp here is really nice. Um, and the blade shape is actually pretty functional. Um, so I've been pretty happy with it. I think that's 10 cuts. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Let's do a couple more. Um, but I just want to do like 10 cuts because this sisal rope, this stuff is just like, I don't know if you guys ever worked with this, but this stuff is really abrasive and hard and just, just nasty stuff to cut. Um, and so I wanted to see how the Benchmade, the steel would hold up after this. So you can see, I mean, there's a little bit of a hang up here and there. I think part of that has to do with, again, with like how I'm holding this, just because maybe there's a couple little spots. Okay, I, I feel, okay, there's a hang up right there. I feel something right there. Um, I actually think that was there before I started cutting this rope because I accidentally whacked into a, uh, a staple earlier in the week. So I think that's what that came from. But the, as far as like the rest of the edge is concerned, it'll still pierce and slice down no problem. So the tip is still good after that. Uh, let's do a little more rope cutting. I'll just ram into this now and really see what we can do. Do a few more. Try to saw at it a little bit. That's making it go through pretty easy. All right, let's try a couple more. See if it'll still do the pierce cuts. Yep, still cuts that nicely. Let me get a fresh sheet here. You know, part of the problem is it's super humid out today. It's about to rain and this paper's getting like all it's not crisp. Okay, right there. It hit that little hang up. There's gotta be a hang up in that blade. Right there is where it's hitting. The rest of the blade is good, but I think where I hit that staple, there must be a little spot, but the rest of the blade, if I keep it near the tip or the heel, seems to slice pretty well. So, I can feel that mark. So, I think that's the problem there. Okay. Let's take a break. I'm going to set up the zip tie test and we're going to cut some zip ties. Okay guys, so here's the little, I'm going to use this as kind of like my test bed. All the zip ties on here. I've got 10 zip ties, at least I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to cut five of these, just cut through them. And then the other five, I'm going to try to get in this little gap here and kind of poke the tip of the knife through and, and pop them off and try to cut them that way. That'll test the tip strength and we'll see if it, you know, deforms it at all. And a lot of times if you're going to get some chipping and rolling, it's going to be when you're trying to pop those zip ties off. I've, I've seen knives fail uh, doing that before, um, you know, when I've been trying to pop zip ties off of something. So we're going to give it a try and see how it does. So let's just cut the first five off, just cut through them. Okay, so that really went through not much effort. That was actually pretty easy. Uh, the harder part I find is trying to get underneath them. So I'm gonna get some like this and I'm gonna try to get some from the underside. So let's just see how it slices them off. Oh, that was nothing. That's too easy. So let's try to, let's try to pry up underneath them. Let me hold this board so I don't get sliced up here. Okay. Let's 
try to pry that. And now what I'm doing here, I don't know if you guys know, is if you run a blade across your fingernail like this, right there, you can feel that hang up. That's a little tiny, it's a roll, not a chip. Tiny roll, that's where the paper was hanging up. And I don't feel any, I don't feel any hang-ups on the tip of my fingernail. So the tip seems fine. Let's see how it does on my soggy paper. Okay, so again, it cuts great until that little hang-up. As long as I do this right and I stay away from that hang-up, this should the tip is still piercing this, no problem. So still holding its edge through all of that. Uh, from here, I wanna move on to the sticks. Um, part of what I require for my EDC is outdoor use. Um, and I want to whittle a couple tent stakes out of these. Uh, so I'm gonna sharpen one end, blunt one end, and then carve like kind of a, uh, a modified notch I think they call it like a fish mouth notch or something. Uh, I don't know the name, I just know how it works. So I'm gonna do that on two of these sticks and see if it still slices paper. So what I'll probably do is uh, as I film this, I'll just speed it up. But we'll see how this thing digs into some maple. This is green maple, by the way. Um, sugar maple, if anyone's interested. I might not even have to speed this up because this is going pretty quick. Um, like I said, this little thumb ramp does make things pretty comfortable and I'm, I'm not in love with this blade shape, like per se, but I definitely like it more than I used to. So this is definitely some hard stuff here. Okay. And now we'll carve a little notch. Now I'm trying to do this fairly quick for the camera, so this might not be the prettiest notch of all time, but I'm hoping that it'll be functional. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing all these different things, and it's because of my last video, or one of the last videos I made about what's the best EDC knife. And I kind of listed all the things that I think a knife should be able to do. And so that's kind of where I'm coming from with these videos is I want to put these through like a gauntlet test. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to call this is like the EDC gauntlet or I don't know, something like that. Just to see if they could perform and how their edges hold up and, and how well they perform each task. And uh, okay, so there's one down. Um, See, I made this little little notch here. Cordage goes through there, should hold it pretty well. Sharpened it, blunted it. Um, I'll do the second one, and uh, we'll see how it all works out. This uh, sheep's foot design that they put on here, uh, it's it's good and everything. I don't think it accomplishes what a sheep's foot is supposed to, which is you know, slicing without piercing because this tip is actually pretty sharp. Um, you know, it comes to a, a decent point. I think this particular sheep's foot that they that they have is more for aesthetic than it is function. If you look at something like the triage, um, that's more for function. That that comes to a a more curved, rounded tip uh, to keep things you know, from piercing. That was designed for first responders. This knife is just designed, really, uh, I think it's pretty much just a purpose-built EDC blade. And I'll tell you what, I have, um, I, I was sad after I lost my 940, because uh, I love that thing, but this has really, um, you know, this has been great. I. I've been, I've had this in my pocket every day and using it every chance I get. And this does a lot of really good stuff for EDC. Um, I know these videos are gonna be a bit long, but I think it's worth it to really test and see what a knife can do. Because I think 
most people that are going to buy knives like these um, are not going to be having a bunch of safe queens. You know, they're going to use their knives, and I use all my stuff. Even if I pay a good chunk of change, uh, you know, I use it I because I expect my knives to perform. Okay, so there's two little, there we go, two little tent stakes out of uh, about thumb thickness. So I'll try to keep that consistent over uh, the videos as I do them. Let's go back to my soggy paper. Okay. Okay, you got some tearing there, but I'm still good there. I think a lot of it, like I said, has to do with my technique, but I would definitely say there is some loss of edge retention here, which is to be expected after this point. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely, even on the piercing, it's not cutting as cleanly. So after about a week of use, uh, and doing actually two of these otherwise, and the zip ties and the sisal rope and all that stuff, it's definitely starting to show a little bit of wear. Next, I'm gonna beat the snot out of these blades, uh, this blade, and cut through some cardboard. Everyone knows how hard cardboard is, and I purposely saved it to the last because I wanted to, well, almost last, I got some duct tape as well. I wanted to rip through some, some of this harder stuff uh, and kind of get the blade worn down before I tried the cardboard uh, to really put this thing through its paces. So, stick around, we'll come back for the cardboard and the tape tests. So the tape, hey, get out of here, Ant. Um, the tape I wanted to do because, you know, when your blade starts getting, now this is already sticky from the, the stuff out of here, um, but I wanted to get the blade kind of sticky before I went through the cardboard to really just make things challenging. And uh, I was gonna go with packing tape, but I figured duct tape was a little tougher. So I'm gonna cut this stuff into three sections and then peel it off with a knife, you know, kind of do some prying and peeling with the tip and see how it does. Oh. Okay, now I'll cut it here. Okay, so there's three sections. Now let's peel this off, get the knife nice and, nice and sticky before we try to Go through this cardboard with a tape. Okay. Come on off of there, you. Okay, that was, uh, I think, seven layers I did on that. And then I've got four layers, uh, excuse me, three layers here. And I'm just gonna try to do like a, a slice, kind of like I was doing through the paper, and just see it'll go through the tape and the cardboard and it's cutting it actually pretty cleanly which is uh, a bit surprising really um, you know I thought with that hang up it might might get on there but let's see how much of this tape kind of stuck onto the, the blade well it's it's not terrible it's got some residue on there um, one other test that I did want to do um, that I forgot to mention is I wanted to test the tips because um, I, I like a, a stronger tip on some of my blades. I get worried about certain manufacturers and how thin the tips are because a lot of times I bore holes and stuff. So I just wanted to also, you know, kind of just kind of get in here, drill a couple holes and see what this knife will do. And just kind of really now this is a handrail. This wood is for handrail. It's just pine. It's nothing crazy hard, but I believe it's it's yellow pine, so it's pretty hard for pine. Yeah, that's still no rolling, no chipping, and uh, the way the sheep's foot comes down, it's kind of center line. The tip is center line with the whole knife, so it's it's good for for doing that kind of stuff. Sometimes if there's a lot of belly and you just got like a, a straight blade, the point's way up here and it gets kind of wonky as you're trying to drill. Um, but you know, this is all this is all stuff that I use my everyday carry knives for. So I wanted to test it, you know, kind of real world and give you guys an idea of how these knives are going to perform for you should you decide to buy one of these uh, from St. Nick's. Uh, and again, uh, I will have links to their stuff. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't help me. I don't get money if you buy from them, but 
these guys have very competitive prices and uh, they're, they're as good as any that you're gonna find online. And uh, always free shipping, no matter, no minimums, any of that stuff, so check them out. All right, let's get on to the cardboard and I may need to back up the camera for this so that I have enough room. Well, let me try it. Uh, I'm just, this is about two feet, so I'm gonna try to slice through this three or four times uh, and you know each slice will be two feet of cardboard this stuff is a little bit thinner uh, so I'll try to keep with that consistency and go through thinner cardboard for the test but you never know it'll switch up but I'm gonna try to be pretty um, pretty consistent with these tests for these these gauntlet reviews so let's just start one a little hung up on that bend. This is, um, I don't know, you guys probably have never done this stuff on camera, but if you're a YouTuber and you have, you know this stuff can be very awkward to do on camera when you're trying to do a close up and you don't have anyone to help you. Okay, so there is one, two, one, two, three, four cuts. Uh, so that went through about eight feet of cardboard. I'll just cut some of the smaller stuff up uh, so we can see. Getting a little bit of hang up. Again, I don't know if that's me or just the soft cardboard or what it is, but um, see now, now it's going through this like crazy. I think I got a better grip on this. Um, it's a little less awkward than it was before, so this is just shredding this cardboard. Uh, and well, that was me, I just hit on the uh, Choil there, but yeah, this is definitely definitely going through the cardboard. Really, no issues um, after all this other testing. Um, yeah, clean, almost cleaned it up a little bit. Took some of the residue off there. Um, let's see how we do on our paper now. Now we were getting uh, some rough cutting and had one hang-up spot. And, you know, like I said, right there, there's a very small roll, but it's, it doesn't take much to hang up on paper. Um, so, let's see. Oh, still cutting it. Uh, put the hang up there. So, it's still, it's still cutting okay. I mean, it's still cutting paper for the most part. Um, I have, this is the first knife I've done this gauntlet on, so I don't know if that, that's good or bad or what that's gonna end up being. Um, but it seems to be, it's still doing good like on this, this piercing the paper, except for there. Um, so, this is hard because like I said, this is gonna kinda be a benchmark uh, for other knives and like I said, the other thing is I've had about a week of, of good steady use on this thing, on this factory edge. But overall, I think Benchmade did a great job on the edge. Now, uh, let's kind of pull away from the testing and I'll just give you a quick overview about this and about St. Nick's Knives as a company. Let me just jump into this. The G10 is great. This thing is, uh, it feels a lot sturdier than a regular Griptilian with the, uh, the FRN handles and uh, it has this great two-tone uh, G10. It's got like this, this light blue and then this, this uh, gray, and they just, they look really nice. I think it's a, a really sharp looking knife. Um, you got this jimping here on the blade, and you got a little bit of jimping here on the liners, top and bottom. This makes for a really nice thumb ramp. Um, you know, carving through things, it's really nice, and it's not as exaggerated as some of the Spyderco where they've got like this big hump um, I still prefer like a classic drop point style, but this is really functional. I know the drop point doesn't have like this thumb ramp and it feels really good. So, you know, I understand the appeal of Spyderco knives and the ergonomics and, and all that stuff, but really, um, I think this has a beat because it's not quite as severe. And uh, the little jimping here is just, it's just nice. Um, I really like, you know, the, the knife was really smooth. You know, I've heard a lot of stuff lately about how all oh, Benchmade's quality control is garbage. Um, this knife is perfectly centered. Let's see if we can show this. Um, this thing is perfectly centered. 
okay blade blades perfectly centered everything is put together really nicely there is zero zero blade play and it's still a pretty flickable action um, and it's like I said it's still getting broken in but right out of the box the action was very nice on this blade centering is perfect no play everything these this G10 just mates up perfectly there's no like weird lines or different things like that um, this thing's excellent and all the benchmates I've received have been the same with the exception of my friend's bug out which was slightly off center um, but otherwise this thing's been been great and uh, I've, I've, I've put it through the paces um, super comfortable like I said I really look my 940 is my favorite knife of all time uh, my late 940 uh, but you know this thing is really good I've I've owned three three different mini grips and they're a little small for me I, I don't like they're a little bit too small for everyday carry but this full-size grip is great and I've I owned one full-size grip and I just wasn't in total love with the with the plastic handles. Uh, I call them plastic. They're FRN, but this G10 is just great. And the other thing is, is I'm not a huge fan of 154 CM. I like it, but it's just not. After having so many knives in S30V and higher, I just I prefer anything in S30V or better. Uh, so this 20CV is awesome. Really good stuff. Uh, it's it's definitely a step up from S30V and edge retention. Like I said, it's very similar to M390. I've heard some people talk about 20CV and M390 like it's the best steel ever. I don't think it is, um, but for everyday carry, this is more than enough. I mean, this thing is still very functionally sharp. Um, it'll still shave. I mean, after all that crap that I just put it through, and you can see this is factory edge. I've, I have not touched this up, and it'll shave. So to me, after all that, yeah, it had some snags on the paper. Yeah, you know, it didn't perform perfectly on the paper at the end, but to be still be shaving sharp after all that rope cutting and all the tape and all the cardboard and the zip ties and all that stuff, um, this is a very good steel. This is a very good steel. I love S30V, but S30V tends to lose that shaving sharp edge pretty quickly and keep a functionally sharp edge for a long time. This keeps the shaving sharp for a long time, and I, ha I mean, again, from the factory, I still haven't, I still haven't lost the shaving edge. Does it shave as nice as it did when I first got it? No, no. Um, you know, it, it leaves a couple little hairs here and there, and you got to put a little more pressure. But the point is, after all that stuff, this will still shave. So, in summation, great knife, and if you're in the market for this knife or any other knife, um, Saint Nick's carries a full line of. Spyderco, uh, Benchmade, ZT, uh, tons of Kershaw, um, what else, they carry a bunch of SE, they carry Leatherman, they, I mean, they carry a lot of good fixed blades and a lot of high-end, great quality folders, and they've also got a lot of budget stuff too. One of the videos I'm working on uh, for another episode of Knife Thursday is going to be an under $50 knife shootout. And so St. Nick's is going to send me a bunch of knives. Uh, well, I don't know about a bunch, but several knives in the under $50 range um, as like a budget folder shootout. So I'll look forward to that in the coming weeks or months. And uh, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I know this is a long video, but I really wanted to show how these things are used and how well uh, these knives can perform for your everyday carry stuff, how often they're going to need to be sharpened, and the kind of performance that you can expect if you want to lay down your cash for any certain knife. So I didn't want this to just be a tabletop. I want it to really show you guys what these knives can do. So I appreciate St. Nick's sending me this, um, and I, I will be buying it because this knife is is really good. Expect to see this a lot in my Instagram. Uh, if, if you're uh, on Instagram, it's just at RevHiker. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more of the gauntlet reviews, if you like this, please let me know in the comments. If you hated it, I guess you can still let me know in the comments. But uh, anyway, I, I want to do knife reviews for guys who use knives like I do. So hope you enjoyed it. Catch you guys later. Uh, God bless as always, and I'll see you next time.